the dramatic Rick, and he's a hometown guy. The crowd really loves him. When it comes to basketball, most people think of five tall guys from each team on the hardwood battling it out to score more than their opposition. There's a lot of emphasis on the word tall in basketball. However, we gotta put some respect on the short kings, especially Michael Anthony Jerome Webb, AKA Spud Webb. Standing at five foot six inches, Spud Webb played point guard for 12 seasons in the NBA for the Atlanta Hawks, Sacramento Kings, Orlando Magic, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Prior to his NBA career, Webb was told he was too small to play basketball, but eventually got a chance to play on his junior high team at Wilmer Hutchins High School. Webb was dunking a basketball by the time he was five foot three. In college, Webb led Midland College to the Junior College National Championship with 36 points in the final game. After stellar years with Midland, he transferred to North Carolina State University to play under legendary coach Jim Balvano, garnering 10.4 points per game and 5.7 assists per game. Eventually, he was drafted by the Detroit Pistons in the fourth round of the 1985 draft, but was cut before the season and picked up by the Atlanta Hawks. One of Webb's most astounding feats came in 1986 when he surprised everyone by competing in the slam dunk contest against his teammate Dominique Wilkins, who was six foot eight. Webb shocked the world in his hometown of Dallas, Texas, and defeated Wilkins in the final round with two perfect 50s. 20 years later, Webb trained Nate Robinson, another player below six feet tall for the dunk contest. Robinson ended up winning the event, making him and Webb the only players under six feet tall to win the contest. Webb would always use his speed and jumping ability to rise above the opposition, and he will forever be remembered as one player who never let being undersized deter him from going into the trenches amongst taller players. Great job there, David, Mr. David Yarger. Give it up for him. A highlight mixtape for the ages. So, if you don't know, now you know, after all that, why we're here and what we're doing. I'm Troy LeCastro. You're used to seeing me on the chase, but we got a special special presentation for you tonight. Uh, this is We've been pumping this up for weeks, man, and we finally sold it out, and we are so lucky to have this for two reasons, two special guests in the house. One, we've got the BBCE certified 1986-1987 FLIR Wax Packs box sealed, ready to get ripped. And two, ladies and gentlemen, an NBA icon, 1986 NBA dunk contest winner you just saw there in the video. Please help me welcome Mr. Spud Webb. <laughs> How you doing? Great, great. Can't complain. Good. Hey, glad to have you here in Buffalo. Now, have you ever, you ever been to Buffalo? I've been through uh, once. I don't know how long ago that was, though, but I had a teammate in junior college that was from Buffalo. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we had a chance to talk to uh, Chris... Um, Oh my goodness! Why am I Chris Mullen? We had a chance to talk to him in the uh, in the summertime, and he told us he said he remembers too when he played for St. John's, came up here and they got smoked by Niagara University. So I guess that's our claim to fame oh, okay. up here in the north. But uh, glad to have you here. You picked a good time to come because it's like right before it gets extremely cold, and you know a boy from Dallas. I'm a Texas kid. I I, I don't like the snow or the cold, but. Uh, I'm a little disappointed it wasn't snow because I, I won't see some snow so I can go back and tell everybody I see some snow. But, <laughs> hey, maybe next time. I would say maybe next time. Or I don't know. Can anybody here? We got a, like a live studio audience this time. And, of course, we got the chat up here. Uh, anybody go make some snow for them? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody figure that out? I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But uh, I don't want to leave him hanging here, too. I want to introduce our breaker, Steve Richardson. He will be starting it off for you guys with the box. You can see it right there. He's got it. Steve, what's going on? How we doing? Um, I can't believe that I'm sitting here with this in front of me right now, Troy. I am a huge basketball fan. Everyone knows that in the chat. I love <laughs> nothing more than open up basketball cards, and we have the Holy Grail sitting right in front of me today. A chance to pull some Jordan rookies. Maybe get some Spud Webs, too. <laughs> Maybe get some Spud Webs, too. Uh, I am very excited for this. This is going to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, well, I've got some questions here for you that we will get to eventually, but right now, just so you know, what we do here for our breaks, like we're doing right now, is what'll happen is we do a little bit of a random. So these folks that are here that bought spots into this, we'll have their names and we'll have the packs that they're going to get. 
So we do a little bit of random, and then we'll find out what packs that they're going to get and open. And then once we do that, we'll get onto it, we'll open up the box, and uh, we'll start chatting. So how does that sound? Uh, sounds good. All right. So Tyler, if you could, please, could we start the random? All right, so there you go. You see the pack numbers. You see the names of the folks. 36 packs, 36 names. There you can see. A little behind the scenes for you here. Remember, it's gotta be three or more times. So if you could hit the dice roll, please. There you go, that is seven, so that'll work. We're gonna do the packs first. Now, have you ever had a chance to like open this up yourself? Have you ever wanted to open any of this yourself? Or uh, I think once I did open them up, <laughs> open once, uh, but I couldn't take them with me. That was the only difference. <laughs> my grandson would have loved them. Oh my God, yeah, oh. absolutely. Now, how old's your grandson? He's seven. He think he's in the NBA already. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that's, that good, that's good mentality. Yeah. That's good mentality. But, I mean, is it one of those things where, you know, being a grandfather, you, you see your grandkid, you know, you don't care what he does. You kind of support him, whatever. And if, if, if he wants the help, you give it to him, but you kind of just let him let him do his own thing? Oh, no. He, he, he listens to nothing I say. He's way better than me already, so... Uh, he he asked about all seven again, seven times again. Guys. He all the, all the other guys. He I guess I'm not good enough for him to be in his conversation. So really, so he 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 think he's the the greatest of all time now. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I feel like in this day's NBA, that's kind of the mentality you have to have going in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I I love it because you don't have to force him to go practice or play football or whatever. He wants to play, and that's good. You, you you love a kid like that, but I never try to teach him. Yeah, you know, I just go and watch the games, and and uh, then I you know make a little side bit with him though. But mm -hmm. uh, I let everybody else teach him. Yeah. yeah, but is there ever those days where you know he gets a little too big for the britches, and you got to kind of pull out some handles on him? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh every now and then uh, he'll come bugging me, staring me, staring at me, and uh, want to play one on one. Or, <laughs> Think I can't? He think he got a crossover and a step back, and and so I have to show him every now and then, and then he'll come later and he'll go, "You wasn't that good." <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, that's funny. I love it. All right. Well, we are done with the random now. So why don't we go ahead and just run through quickly uh, who's getting what? Steve, how about I let you do that? Why don't you run through and just show who is getting what pack? All right, Cam. You have number thirty-four, Antoine G with number twenty-eight. Chris C with 14, Whitney D with 12, Jacob K with 29, Jason F with 30, Brett G with 13, Jeremy W with 23, Jason F with 25, Suro A with 5, Antoine G with 35, Anthony A with 36, Antoine G with 26, Jacob K with 31, Cam M 33, Brett G 16, Sean S 32, Joseph S 20, Stuart K 21, Anthony N with number six, Ryan G 27, Steve C number 17, Christos B three, Jose T number 22, Andrew D, D 11, James D 18, Brad H number four, Joseph S number two, Cam M number one, Anthony A seven, John Z 19, William N 10, Jeremy W eight, Dana H 24, Jason F15 and William N with number nine. Whew. You all right there? Mm -hmm. I feel like that was long winded, huh? A mouthful, yeah. That was long winded. So let's just take an extra. Oh. oh. I was just going to say take an extra. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler had the quick trigger finger there. Sorry, Tyler. I was just say take, uh, take a second. We'll just give you one more second to look and see what you got. And I want to look over at the chat and just thank you guys for yeah. just joining us. Uh, or if you've been here since the beginning. If you are just joining us, this is the special 86-87 Fleer basketball break with NBA legend Spud Webb in the house to help us out here. Uh, so Steve, why don't you go ahead. What Steve's gonna do here, we're gonna hit the overhead camera. He's gonna reveal the box. He's gonna unseal the box. And we have sticky notes here for packs one through nine, 10 through 18, so on and so forth until 36. And Steve is going to put those stacks out and then once those stacks are out, we'll get to breaking. All right, everybody. This is crazy. Can't believe we're doing this right here. Thanks for you sitting see, tight and being so patient with us. I appreciate it. You oh, no, see the good. letter from <laughs> baseball I'm enjoying this. Exchange. <laughs> we're going to open this up and reveal 
The Holy Grail. The Holy oh. Grail of basketball cards sitting right in front of me right here. Pretty clean. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful looking box. We're gonna get this out right here. Keep everything on camera. And we're gonna open this up. Did you think for a second that a product that you would be in that would have your rookie? Yeah. Let me touch. Yeah. Let me touch. Let me touch. Let me touch. Let me touch. Yeah, give. We got the, this is the good juju here. Get the magic. Magic touch. Oh, oh, right, you, in the where right, right in the middle. Where right in the middle. Right there, there you go. go. There you go. Right, right, there. right there. See? Did you ever think for a second that a product that you'd be in as a rookie would be so expensive no, such a holy grail? No, because when you're a little kid, all you think about is playing basketball. You don't think about the cars, the poster, the tennis shoes, and things like that. Mm -hmm. You just wanted to play. But, you know, it comes along with it. When uh, I was a rookie, uh, they used to bring the cards in, and you're like, man, what are they doing with the cards? Now you wish you would have kept them. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they're so big now that everywhere you go, the uh, kids have cards for you to sign when you go to basketball camps and yeah. charity events. So it's it's all it's all good that Ooh. it's making this revenue. There they are. There what a they bubble gum. are. Look at what that. What a bubble gum. There they are. And like <laughs> yeah. I said, guys, we are going to do one through nine stacks. So let's get those out. I was going to say, should we all share a piece of gum, huh? Uh, right. <laughs> let's all take I mean, we so can break it off into three. No problem. That's how old it is. Stack one through nine, guys. Stack one through nine. There, yeah, you're getting the wrapper and the gum. Reach back. We're not eating any of the gum. We're Listen, not eating any of the gum. Disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. Chew at your own discretion. <laughs> yeah. We don't advise that, but if you want to try that at home. Nineteen through twenty-seven. I told you I would try it. And That's the kind of person I am. Off here, twenty-eight through thirty-six. I will be doing half of the box. Pete will be doing the other half. Yep, we'll we'll be a tag team over there. It's happening. All right. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. All right, are you ready to go? Yeah, I am ready to go. We are going to go just one at a time here. So the top one is going to be number one, as you can see, guys. There you go. So I put the stickies one through nine here, and then 10 through 18, 19 through 27, 28 through 36. I will be doing these two stacks here. There you go. So here we go. Now, I got. do you do, you do a lot of these conventions, like signing appearances and that? and. You know, when you're at these, do you get a chance to kind of walk around and, and, and see what's going on down on the floor? Oh, absolutely. For a while there, I was like, uh, I the um, never went to shows and things like that. But now, uh, over the last 10 years, I've been going to a lot of shows yeah, and walk around and see all leave, the, leave the yeah, uh, memorabilia, <laughs> all the cars time. that you saw when you was uh, younger and, and uh, people still have them in good, good condition and good shape. So... Uh, I'm well aware of uh, the the, uh, the cards of uh, the kids' collections. Uh, like uh, my my deal is personally is I try to get every card that I have uh, collage for my my grandson. So uh, definitely, uh, but he he only wants Steph Curry, so he don't care what Paul Paul do. But I was gonna I'm, say, I'm are, are your cards good him. enough for him? No, I'm forcing it on him. <laughs> That's the only thing yeah. you'll force on him, right? Is that? Thing oh, force on him, but. Oh, 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 hey, look at that. Oh, first pair. Uh, I don't want to interrupt, but <laughs> look at that. Spud Webb in the first pack. We have Dominique Wilkins in this first pack, too. <laughs> and if you guys don't know, Spud Webb, each pack that contains a Spud Webb, you get $4,500 in that's break right. credit. So that's, that's right. going to Cam M. Congratulations, Cam M. First right. pack. You yeah. bless the box. Yeah, there you go. There it is. is Spud Webb in the first pack. There you are. I was gonna say whoever's <laughs> doing awesome that. Awesome picture for the card too. What an awesome, awesome photo for that. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about the photography on some of these cards? Uh, I mean, um, you know, you're just playing, so you don't you know, you don't you just don't think about it, but they the guy that was with us uh taking a lot of pictures was Scott Cunningham, so he has a he used to send me a lot of and the pictures Alex and stuff that uh you never think that you have, so uh, it's good to see that they have a good one on my rookie card. Cause uh -huh. it, yeah, I hate when they have uh, your your card when they have someone else on there. I think it should just be you. I agree. It's the first impression too, you know. Yeah. Do you you know do you still own some of the some of the photography or some of the photos from your playing days? So like you said, in the moment you're just trying to play, but you have some of that stuff to kind of go back on and. I, you I know, mean, kind of memorious for uh, you? Anything, they, it's in my mom's house. I don't keep it. I probably, when I get older, I'll probably be looking for it. But 
Uh, most of the stuff that uh, people send or I had when I was younger or when I was playing is at my mom's house, like the du- slam dunk Gomez. trophy and all that stuff. Sticker. Cards, she got different um, uh, pictures and stuff on the wall. But my, my sister and, and brother and them, they probably don't know the value of it. They probably give them away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hear a lot of, uh, I guess, horror stories, for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. where you go to a garage sale and you're picking up something for... Nickels and dimes where little did they know it's yeah. quarter fortune they had on their hands. Yeah, I, I had a buddy. Um, he was the ball boy uh, Ooh, for nice the Atlanta Hawks. And um, Akeem, by the way, back Akeem. when he was Akeem. Akeem, yeah. Yeah, he was collecting stuff from Bird and Jordan and, mm-hmm. and Ewan and Moses Malone. All they was giving him cars and shoes and stuff. And when his parents passed away, he went up to the attic and all that stuff was Dr. up there. Jay. <sighs> from a, back in the 80s. Yeah, what a gold mine. 80s, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. What, what's he doing now? Oh, he's probably on vacation somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somewhere nice, huh? Yeah. He's in the Bahamas. This is for Christos B. Christos Number B. Three for Christos B. Now, I want to I get to some questions that I had written down here, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. But um, So, currently, you're actually the president of basketball operations for the G League's Texas Legends. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did that come about? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, about fourteen, I think I've been there over fourteen years. Uh, it's something. It's, it's it's where I grew up, so I try to just stay there and help people, uh, the interns, uh, players, keeping their dreams alive, going to NBA or overseas. So, Donnie Nelson was the owner of our team at the time. Uh, Cuban, Mark Cuban, as bonus. Mm-hmm. But he came to me and said, "Man, we want you to be the first coach of our team that's coming in." Uh, you know. It was a D League team Gosh for the, Williams. the Dallas Mavericks. I said, "Man, I do not want to coach." I said, "The coaches get fired. I want to be the general manager." Yeah, He's right. Like, right. Just, Boop, you're the general manager. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Just like that. Yeah. Mark Kellogg, guys. All right, guys. This is a good sign. I don't want to interrupt. This I don't want to interrupt. But we're. This is a good sign. Buck Williams. It's, it's, it's going to be close. Let's see. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness, there, there it, is. it is. Michael Jordan <laughs> to Christos B. So, our first pack first squad. Jordan. Third pack? Third pack, Jordan. Jordan? Michael Jordan, we're going to get that. That's a good start. Protected for you. That's a good Giving start. Giving that to Sean. He's doing all the sleeve and the top loaded for me. There you go. Christos B with the first Michael Jordan. Congratulations. We're off to a hot start here, I'd what say. What a start. I know. You got Jordan in the first pack. <laughs> we got Spud in we the first Spud pack. We got Spud in the first pack. And if you we ask me, I was going to say, pack. Yep, first well. pack magic. Uh, so being the GM, being in the position that you're Ooh. in now, I- I'm curious. Let's what are some off. differences that you see Christos. from being on the court? To now holding a front office position that maybe you know the general public or fans may not see. I'm a point guard, so you paid attention to everybody's position and what they're supposed to do in play. So uh, when you when you're evaluating a guy now, you, I look at the same bad. thing. You know what what is his strengths and weaknesses uh, now? Uh, back then, you can get away with a lot of stuff, and now it's so wide open. You got to be able to put the this ball on Brad the floor, H. switch on defense. You definitely are not gonna get on the floor if you can't shoot. So and the rules are a little different, so now it's more threes than like when we ran four or five threes a game. Uh, you know, was the average. Now they shoot like 90, 90 threes a game. So you have to look at guys that uh, can stretch the floor, and that's what most of we look at as far as you know, Kareem. especially in the Mavericks situation where we have you know Luca, and then you want guys around him that can shoot. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's interesting, too, how you said, uh, you know, check, yeah, check, 90 uh, a game now compared to what it was back then. Yeah. And where do you think you saw that that turn, you know, that evolution in basketball, the way it was played and, and the schemes and what you ran? Uh, was it people just started figuring things out? Or what do you think that is, like the, well, the I math? I, I didn't say I liked it. Right, no. Yeah, <laughs> no, you didn't, you didn't say you were a fan. <laughs> No, um, you know, um, you know, most of the time, you know, we run picks, come off screens, uh, you know, you run sidelines and, Magic and uh, things thing. like that. But now it's just, you know, you come down, Jack, you know, find a three with the analytics. They want a three instead of a two. 
And, uh, you know, I think it really switched when uh, Steph Curry and them really messed the game up. Everybody can't shoot like them, but they still shooting. And, um, you know, you want to you wanna go to a game where you see a pick and roll or a pin down, uh, some things like that. They're a fast break, but it's just it's, it's who can get the most threes up and make the most points, I guess. Uh, that's what, what they look for. And this is for Saros A. Number five for Saro A. Yeah, Steve, and, you know, we'll try to keep it rolling. Uh, oh, and look at that. Look what the sticker's going to be, guys. There you go, right off the bat there. Right off the bat. Michael Jordan sticker. We'll get that one out first. There you go. Michael Jordan. Very nice there. Now, also, too, if you're in the chat and you are watching this, you know, Charles feel, Barkley. feel nice free one. to throw some stuff in there. Um, if you have questions or any comments that you would like to ask or give to Spud, he's here. And uh, so we'll, we'll kind of monitor that as we're going along. Wait, are we live? What do you guys say? Of course we're live. <laughs> <laughs> you guys mean? Oh, now you guys are begging for shout outs? Come on now. Um, so next, the next thing I have written down here for you. Uh, as we go through this and, you know, you're looking up there. Alone. There you go. You're seeing Another some different. There, Carl Malone. Seeing some different players, uh, like the mailman there and that. But are there some players from your Number years in the league for Anthony Adams. that you think deserve more credit than they get for their ability on the court? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, guys that were two-way players back then, like you know, you played against Monty, Sidney Moncrief, you know, Mark Price. Uh, Raj Strickland, those guys didn't get the recognition. I think Dominique didn't really get the recognition he should have got. Yeah. Alex English, another guy that was real tough that, you know, people overlooked. Um, I mean, it, it was a lot. I mean, Bernard King may have been the hardest guy I've seen the guys play uh, hard to guard. I just can't imagine how many points he would average today. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing up all those shots. Yeah, but. Uh, there, there's a lot of guys back there. I, I know they talking about, you know the NBA different now, which it, which it is. But you know you just don't have no six six bullies, right? Uh, like we have six six bullies now. And you didn't have that back in the day. This, these guys was way too physical. Six nine, six ten. Number seven for Anthony A. So we actually had our first question in the chat. I saw it up there. Ty, do you mind scrolling up? I just wanted to see who it was. I did see the question itself. So this is from Wahoos here. Uh, how did the Spud nickname come to be? Who are you, who are this guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, who it's, who it's, wants to know? He, Spud wants to know who's it's, asking. It's, it's, a, it's a long story. So uh, I'm going to tell my age on here, which I'm 59. I'll help you out. Uh, in 63, when the Russian satellite came out, it was Sputnik. Press Molly. Yeah. And that was the year I was born. And and us black folks had this great sense of humor. And my dad's best friends called me Larry said Bird. I had a big head like a Sputnik. <laughs> so the kids in the neighborhood couldn't say Sputnik, so they saying Spud. That's how I got the nickname Spud is that they, until you know, you cognizant of to ask your mom, you know, learn your real name, but only the police Kima, and your teacher call you Anthony. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Very good time. And uh, I tell people, that's not on my birth certificate. So before 9-11, it was really bad because, I mean, after this 9-11, it was really bad because mm -hmm. people put spud on my check or my uh, my NBA, too, it check and your flights. <laughs> so when after 9-11, you couldn't do that. They were oh having you God. in the back. Like charging you like money to change your change your name and have you back there asking you questions for hours because oh you know they, you know spud, spud. Right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're trying to hide something. So how many times yeah. have you actually had to tell that story about your nickname then? Oh, Number the kids, man, you amazing. W. The kids, the kids that camp, boy, they come in with some questions. They only not know your stats real well. They they ask you some questions. So I get it mostly when the kids camp. It's a good one. So there you go. First, uh, first question from the chat there. So make sure, uh, make sure you guys keep putting that away. All right, we are on Small number player. eight right now for Jeremy W. Yeah, yeah keep putting awesome. your keep putting your questions in the chat is what I was trying to say, but sometimes I black out and say the wrong things because that's what happens here. 
Uh, this is from <laughs> Gan Joe. How about this one? Who was the one player, if there was one, that you didn't want to make angry during your career? Ooh. Uh, you know, it wasn't nobody uh, you I like. I don't want to piss him off. He's going to play harder or wake, you know, like they don't wake up or sleep and whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, I, I can't remember any guys you just didn't want to piss off. Number you, nine for you William didn't, um, N. I, I just can't think of nobody like that because I, I I mean you know you just you just wanted to play you concentrate on play what you got to do uh, you didn't try to try to play no mind games with no guy uh, you know some guys talk noise or try to you know stuff like that but it wasn't nobody I like oh, I'm not gonna piss him off well you might not want to piss Michael Jordan off I don't think but <laughs> right you know because he's petty. You know, he's looking for something to mm-hmm. encourage him to score 50 points on you. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I feel like a lot of us learned that uh, from watching The Last Dance. There's quite quite a bit of yeah. that, making up stories just to kind of motivate himself. Yeah. Very interesting guy. What's what, what have your interactions been like with him? Well, we're the same age. So yeah. when I was at oh. NC State, he was at Carolina. So, you know, when I came in NBA, we all was in the West. I mean, I in the East. So... Uh, we did a lot of basketball camps together early in the year, early in our careers, because he was with Coca-Cola, I was with Coca-Cola, and mm-hmm. he had the uh, tennis shoe, I had the tennis shoe. So we did a lot of charity events together stuff. And now, uh, most of the time before he became an owner of the team, we, we did a lot of golf tournaments. But, uh, you know, you just, he just still the same old Michael when you see him. He talking noise, reminding you <laughs> what he did to you then like we wasn't there. <laughs> you know, so he's, he's still the same. It's fun. People, you know, think he's arrogant, but I just say it's just confidence and uh, everybody pulling at the guy, you know. So, right. But uh-huh. when you're sitting down somewhere with him, he's one of the guys. He's just like me. He smokes cigars. So it's it's really cool to sit and smoke cigar and listen to him tell stories about stuff we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we wasn't there. Like old, like old war stories, right? Yeah. Sharing old war stories. Number 10 for William N. We are on our second stack, guys. 10 for William N. Now you mentioned golfing. You mentioned cigars right there. So what are some other hobbies for you, like, you know, when you're not doing basketball? What do you like to be doing? Oh, I never played basketball. Once I retired, I was one of those guys that retired. Yeah. So um, I took up golf. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that I uh, took up golf. My mom tell me that's why I'm not married because I'm playing golf every day. <laughs> great, great choice. Hey, I like yeah. it. Take one of those. But uh, uh, I'm glad I took up golf. So uh, me and Ron Harper, we, we've been friends forever, me and yeah. Ron. I try to plan for one of his five rings sometime, but he won't, he won't put it up. <laughs> But uh, we're like brothers. Uh, I'm the godfather of his daughter. He's the godfather of my daughter. Another so, Hakeem. Um, we, we still play. Matter of fact, next week we're going to Puerto Rico to play all week some golf. So, um, you know, um, Dr. J. smoking cigars is something I took up being around all the older guys on the golf course. Mm-hmm. As soon as you get through playing, they're like, we're going to drink scotch and smoke cigars. Come on. I'm like, okay. Okay, right. <laughs> You're just going to go with the flow. Yeah. You're like, if you guys say so. Yeah, so now I'm well, about a memory of a bunch of cigar William bars Hunt. now around Dallas because uh, when we get through playing at the country club, we either smoke their cigars or we go to the cigar bar where we're members at. Nice. Huh. So... What would you say is probably the nicest course that you think you've, you know, had an opportunity to actually, you know, play at? Oh, play definitely. Uh, for Andrew D. Definitely uh, Pebble Beach, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's the... It's I on mean, my bucket list, of course. I mean, all of them out there that are uh, this nice, man. That's, 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 that's really nice. I love that place. Now, uh, earlier you were talking about trash talking, and I happen to see in the chat here, you know, somebody asked, who do you think was, you know, one of, if not the best, trash talkers that you had a chance to go up against, and uh, you know, any stories to maybe share about them. I mean, I I don't just say good trash talkers because half time you just try not to pay no attention to them. But Tim Hardaway liked to talk. He don't even talk like it's not bad. Like Michael talk no, but it's funny though because when he come out there, he go it's post a night or you know uh, <laughs> some I'm gonna score put down fifty yeah. or some. Just fun like that. Nobody like arguing and stuff like that. But Larry Bird was the funniest. Really? Thing. Yes. Larry he Bird. would call out our plays and stuff. Come over here, fire down. Come over here. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. And and he'll tell you, don't put don't put that white boy on me, Mike. I'm you know telling Mike Vitello, and don't put a rookie on me. I see he'll say, 
Y'all putting a little cause Lorenzo Charles came in the game one mm. time, God rest his soul. He said, no, Lorenzo, no rookies guard me. I'm going to shoot left-handed this time, and I'm going to shoot right-handed next time, and I'm going to bank the next shot. And he does it. But uh, some of them other guys, uh, uh, I mean, they just, I, I ain't never seen a guy where he just talking, where he belittling somebody. They just talking noise, probably to hype themselves up or, uh, maybe they feeling good that night or something. I don't know, but it's nothing. Nothing. I ain't never seen a guy. Gary Payton talked a lot. Yeah, <laughs> he, he talked the whole game, but uh, I don't. I don't think it was nothing like that. Well, piss for off. Whitney, no. Yeah, he talked to the bench. <laughs> In the, my, my rookie year, uh, Sugar Ray Richardson used to he used to talk a lot when uh, uh, when uh, we played them when they were yeah. in New Jersey. But yeah, it was. I don't. I don't think it was a lot of guys that. Uh, just degrading guys and things like that. No, right. It wasn't. It wasn't necessarily anything. Uh, yeah, demeaning or you know, yeah, it just it was mean funny. spirited. Yeah, it was funny. Man. Yeah, which is which is interesting. You know, you bring up Tim Hardaway again, and I almost, I wish I had this conversation with you before because mm-hmm. we got a chance to speak to him in the summer too. So I would have I would have liked to ask him what was some of his best uh, his best uh, trash talking to, to some of the guys. What would he try to do to make them laugh? Um, so next one I have here too is uh, what are, what about the guys you got a chance to play with? You know I know we talk about who your opponents were, mm-hmm. but Magic Johnson. Who were some of those players that you know you really enjoyed uh, sharing a locker room with the most? Yeah, I mean, my, you know, my first six years, me and me and Dominique were like brothers, you know, inseparable almost. I don't know why he would come to my little apartment when he got ten thousand square feet, but he'd come over. <laughs> there, he'd come over there and hang out. I guess it was a peace of mind for him. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, we went to eat breakfast. I mean, his mother house, my family house. I mean, we vacations. It wasn't days when you didn't find you know those six years. I was in Atlanta with Dominic. We still friend now. Play golf. He went to Georgia. He can't count though on the golf course though, but. <laughs> Um, we, we, I mean, we still friends today when he come to town or I go to Atlanta, call each other, go eat, play golf, stuff like that. So that friendship would never end, you know, cause awesome. I mean, we had too much fun together, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but, uh, I got the opportunity to, I mean, Doc Rivers, we know he was going to be a coach. Cause you know, if we screw up in the game, we didn't have to wait for Mike Fratello to tell us. Doc would tell us, you know, you gotta learn, you gotta learn to get over pick and roll. You gotta do uh-huh. stuff like that. And uh, and uh, I had the great opportunity playing Third with uh, Moses for Malone. Um, uh, God rest his soul too. But Moses Malone was one of my favorite uh, mm. teammates because mm-hmm. he come up oh, with some stories, right. man. And I and I sit by him on go. the on the bus, and he just tell all kind of wild stories that. You just won't believe, you know. Like he told me, you got a guy got cut in warm ups one time. Like Moses, this guy got got cut in warm ups. <laughs> but he he was funny like that. And um, yep, I mean I, I had some good. Uh, John Battle. I mean we, we're still good friends today. Out all the guys that I played with in Atlanta, like Kevin Willis. Matter of fact, I talked to Kevin Willis yesterday. Mm. Uh, and uh, and uh, Cliff Livingston. I talked to him like once a month. I mean, Antoine Carr, all, all those guys, um, Mike McGee, I mean, uh, Cedric Tony, all those guys I played with in Atlanta, still talk to them. And then I, when I traded to Sacramento, I played four years. Yeah. With uh, Mitch Richmond, one of the, another hard, man, this guy, I love basketball. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I walk in with my golf shirt on because, you know, we're in last place. <laughs> I'm going to play golf. He's like, oh, man, you got your golf shirt on. Yeah, we ain't going to get bad. nothing out of you. I'm like, no, we're in last place, nice Mitch. I'm going to uh, go play golf. But uh, Mitch was, I mean, this guy love basketball, man. Yeah. He, we, he, he our only guy. He's our only guy, you know, getting him the ball. He's scoring 30 a game. And uh, and he he make the rookies stay out to practice and play them one on one. I'm like, dude, we need you tomorrow. You see all these guys we got on this bench? <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and he he just loved basketball. But uh, playing playing with Mitch was was was, was really really fun. Um, and then um, uh, we had Walt Will, Walt Williams and Lionel Simmons and those guys. But mm-hmm. when Bobby Hurley came to our team, the former people, UB coach. No, no, Patrick Ewing, Who? Bobby Hurley. No, no. I'm talking about Bobby Hurley, Duke Bobby Hurley. Yeah, he used to coach for yeah, University yeah, yeah, of Buffalo. Yeah. Love Buffalo, yeah. Yeah, just so, a little connection. Yeah, yeah. Connection there for the locals. Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember the but uh Bobby man, uh the guys didn't like him. I guess they didn't like the guys coming from Duke. So when he got there, I was like, 
he's hanging out with us here. They're like, why the heck they don't, don't like this dude? This dude is down to earth. He's he's drinking beers with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's going uh, everywhere we go. But he was a rookie, so we made him go half of the time because he make we make him drive us around. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but those are good old days. But me and Bobby still friends today. But then we used to go play golf on off days. Me, him, and the team doctor and and uh, it's funny when Bobby had the accident. Fifteen for Jason. I half. Said, I said Bobby. I mean, uh, I heard that uh, Co- uh, Coach K came up and you you almost jumped out the bed. He's like, yeah, man, I never wanted Coach K to see me down. I was like, man, you on you on, you breathe the wrong way and you down. You worried about Coach K seeing you down? Yeah, that's how much uh-huh. you know they love that guy. But man, Bobby, he's he's the best man. He was one of my best uh, teammates. Cause even after practices, he I I get home and here he come, Bobby comes sitting on the couch half of the night, just sitting there watching TV. He, he was Williams. he was pretty cool to be with. Yeah, and I mean him came real Cal- tight when we played in Sacramento. I don't want to interrupt. Clark you. Kellogg. I think, I think we may be close. <laughs> we on to another one? We, only, we still only got one spot, huh? Oh, and there is our right. second Michael Jordan. Jason F. Mike. Congratulations, our second Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan, who's that? No, Who? Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Michael, Michael Jeffrey. Jeffrey Jordan. <laughs> there it is. The go- Pulling out the full government name there. I tell you a story. I dunked on Michael Jordan. No, hey, you can dunk. That's what. Well, that's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I wish. I wish I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, you know, I, I'm vertically challenged. I'll call myself that. That's the nice yeah. way of putting it. I can't dunk. Mm-hmm. So I, w- I wish I had that ability though. For sure. For sure. Um, this was for Jason F. Take a look at that. So next thing I have Beautiful. here. Uh, Playing against the likes of, you know, E-Wing, a young Shaq even, uh, MJ, just to name a few. Throughout your whole career, you know, what was the mentality when they came to town or, you know, traveling to play them? 16 for Did, did the mentality G. change at all? Uh, yeah, because there were so many fights. <laughs> nah. So you you hated those guys. That's why uh, you hear the young guys, I mean, the older guys be like, I would never, like, change teams like they do now. Yeah, or go play with each other, cause Kareem. I mean, you in so many battles with them. You're like, you know, way I want to go play with them. You got to get traded. I'm not just gonna go play with that mm-hmm. guy that we trying to beat. And um, when you when when Bird and them came to town, you know what it's gonna be. You know, you had to be on your game. When Michael came, and then when when Magic came, you like, oh, it's just like you know being on. Uh, you know, in school, because, you know, a point guard, you want to watch and see what he do. And you always want to play against the Dominique. best. You always want to play well against the best. So when you when you go to those towns and you go to New York, you know the crowd, know the, those, they know the game. Yeah. See, sometimes we'll be playing better than New York, and you can hear the crowd. for Steve like, C. It. Right. Austin does that too. But uh, the other cities, it's just, it just, you know, we were, the, we were the team. So we basically took over. Their arenas because we we had Dominique and Kevin and and Cliff and Jumma all those guys Randy Whitman and all those guys so yeah we we were we were pretty good we, we I think the one year we Charles Barkley won more games than uh, any had the best record in the league so it was always a show when uh when we hit the road yeah and speaking of the show hitting the road um, I actually did see someone ask in the chat here too uh, what was your favorite place to play ar- arena wise and city wise. I mean, you love playing in New York because, you know, like I said, they know basketball. Even if you're playing harder or they kicking Carl your butt, alone. you can tell the crowd, like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. they into it. Uh, uh, if you, you know, win and they, they appreciate the basketball. So, uh, but, I mean, you always want to play good in, in L.A., you know, because um, the stars are there. People, you know, you find out they're the same size you once you see them in person. <laughs> Number 18 for <laughs> but, James uh, D. Those places like that, L.A., Boston, um, New York, Very Chicago, you, Detroit, because, yeah. you know, you, you watch, I watched Isaiah, you know, come up. So I watched Philly when I was in uh, high school because I watched Maurice Cheeks, you know. Yep. So couldn't play like Dr. J, so you had to watch somebody you can play like. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you you are, you, you just want to play well in those cities. You know, I I... I my my first NBA game, like you know, uh, 
out like a free agent. Yeah. But I started the first game, my first NBA game. Larry Bird. Uh, that I uh, regular season game that I ever saw, I started in. <laughs> Played eight, uh, scored eighteen points and ten assists against Gus Williams. And then you know you had Gus Williams post on your wall, Bird You're trying to walk like him. You try to tie your shoes in the back like Gus Williams. So I told him about it years ago, and he didn't believe, he didn't he didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Is that selective memory, you think, or he's just... Uh... I think it was selective memory, but he, he probably, this rookie ain't nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you talk you talk about your relationship with other players and, you know, guys like Gus Williams, telling him things like that years later. I feel like in this day's game, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, you know, jersey swap and, and things like mm. that are very, very popular. Yeah. Now... Do you have anything that you ever wanted from your playing days, from other guys or anything like that? I'm going to tell you, the only thing I want to do with me, Dr. J, and uh, when I was a rookie, we was trying out. We played them, like, in West Virginia somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had to be at the game at, like, 6 o'clock. We got there, like, 5.15 because we wanted to see Dr. J walk in. You know, we, you know, right, number 19 we grew up thinking we was going to be the next Dr. J. And uh, and uh, so when he walked in, man, we was like, you, you know, like little Absolutely. kids just looking at him, and he spoke, there. and he called me Anthony. I'm like, you know my real name, you know, only the police and your teachers call you by your real name. <laughs> police teacher and Doctor yeah, J. Yeah, Dr. That's good J, call. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, later on, when you know years down the road, when you had the nerve to even say something to him, you're like, I I wanna, you know, you you know my idol. And the only reason I'm playing basketball and uh, I want to play golf with you. And I got the opportunity to play golf with him. So that was cool. And that was, that was enough for you. That, 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 was, that's what you wanted. I didn't need no jersey swap. Yeah. I didn't need no, uh, no things like that. I just, need, I, just needed to, I just needed to meet Dr. J and see Dr. J. Yeah. I didn't even want to file him. I was scared to file him. Yeah. Yeah. Because you may use it was Dr. J. You know? Right. <laughs> right, he was up on such a pedestal, yeah. almost had like that uh, that silhouette Just around him, like he was, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's still today when he walk in, we'd be still be. It's like, damn, he cool. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> I wish I could be as half as cool as Dr. J. I never will be, but that's all right. That's all right. I uh, want to welcome in Pete now too. Everybody, Pete Costello is breaking the second half of this box for you. So say hello to Pete in the chat. Make him feel welcome. He's your, he's here. your. I was gonna say he's your usual uh, <laughs> commander in chief at night, night, anyways. <laughs> so it's a familiar face for you guys. That's right. Familiar face. Well, glad to be here. Glad to have you spot. And yeah. Hope you're enjoying the box so far. It's been yes, a lot sir. of fun. Eh? Yeah, bring back a lot of memories. You pulling up them names. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know it's got to be kind of a blast from the past. Really take you back when you hear some of those names. Probably have a story behind all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, something I wanted to ask you is, you know, you ended up playing, you talked about today's game. Mm -hmm. You ended up playing in two decades, obviously. You played 80s, late 80s, and then into the 90s. Uh, did you notice even a, a shift in the game, in the culture oh. of the game, or uh, that yeah, type of thing, nice even going through that 12 seasons that you were in the league? It was, it was kind of mostly around the same when I was playing. I, I don't think they started jacking up three like 2003 next year, or something. I was Stuart K. retired in 98, 97, 98. Uh, but it was, it was mostly the same when I played all 12 years. It was more physical. Um, you know, they, they tried to take away the hand checking because the scores was like 89, 88, and people was, you know, probably complaining about not seeing some exciting stuff. And then, you know, if you did something, you got knocked out the air and it was a fight. Mm -hmm. So that was running people off. So I think with the with the way the guys make so much money now, they can't have those there we guys go. hurt. There you are. All one. right, one there we go. go. So that is our second Spud Web. We got two Jordans, two Spud Webs now, and I know we did have two Jordan stickers, I believe. So that's our count for the box right. if you guys like are that. keeping track they at home. Good, yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's hard to sign, though, when you, when you, um, because it's such a background, it's tough to uh, autograph it because there's so much in, going on. It's so busy. Yeah. yeah. It's so right. Busy. It's so busy yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we were... Before we went on live, Excellent. we were kind of talking about that, how, uh, yeah. you know, your experience with having to be in this yeah. hobby now with, mm -hmm. you know, like the sticker so sheets that you get sent. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I'm being a professional <laughs> sticker guy because, you know, Panini has sent a lot of cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, everywhere you go, people bring cards. Keep you uh, so the posters. Um, I mean, we do uh, and then we with the legends. Sticker with sticker and with your pack there, too. Mm. Nice. With the Texas Legends, we we're 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 family friendly as it gets. So, if we have three thousand people at our G League game, fifteen hundred are kids. So wow, it's like signing all day at uh-huh. the games, uh, and we have camps and all type of stuff. So they bring their cards, and they bring their posters, and they bring their jerseys. So it's pretty cool. Now speaking of the Texas Legends, the G League. We have a question here, Stephen M. So he said, Spud is working for the legends, like we spoke of earlier. Uh, who should we be keeping an eye on in the yeah. G League right now? It, you know, that's a good question if, if they had a two-way players. Now you got the two-way players. It's not, you know, the guys are already going back and forth from the NBA in, uh, in, into the G League. So it's kind of early to tell who you can see that's going to get called up early. Because I got to see some games where what guys are not under the two-way contracts because can't no team touch those guys. Okay. If you're under the two-way, like our two-way guys with the Legends, mm-hmm. nobody can come and sign them to a 10-day. Gotcha. Just the other guys. So 23, Jeremy And then w. the Mavericks is sending, you know, two of the guys at the end of the bench down there. So you got four Mavericks down there. You don't get to see the G League guys that much, but you got to play them so they can get in the you know, game. So... When they go back up to the Mavericks, they get in the game, they're ready to go. Now, while you are uh, working solely with the Texas Legends, Service. but, I mean, do you ever get a chance to travel to, you know, Dallas to the Mavericks and kind of work out with them, work out with guys like Luca and that, Tim Hardaway Jr.? No, I uh, I go down to the games, mm-hmm. uh, some games, you know, for the pandemic. I used to go to about Jordan, at least yeah. 40 games a year because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, most of the guys I play with either coaching or, a front office or assistant coach. And then I go down there to watch uh, the Mavericks because they have a good team. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, um, I go to I used to go to some of the training camps because, you know, we had to bring two guys up from, uh, from 24, uh, Dana Mavericks H. to the G League. So I go down there and see, what, you know, one we can we yeah. only take two. And uh, so I used to go down and watch that, but – now that Mark Cuban bought our team, you know, we got other guys come in and, and, and uh, making decisions so they can learn because they, they really want to go be general managers and president of operations of the team. I like being with the legends because I can help in different areas. I help with the sponsors. I help with the interns, the, you know, keeping guys uh, uh, jobs of going overseas. And, right, you know, cool. I try to help them with all division with the with the – with the team now since I've been there 14 years I knew it in yeah <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah they're they're kind of looking to you yeah uh, and you've been there. I'm, I'm trying to help them so that mm-hmm. somebody call a, a G I mean an NBA team or somebody call I can give my um, 25 G's and a <laughs> on if he's uh yeah. ready to go up uh, to another team or go overseas or whatever now, what's that like, Ben, uh, working with Mark Cuban? Because uh, I, I, how many years ago did he purchase the Legends? It's been about four years now, I think. Uh, but I knew Mark before he had the billions. He actually used to play with us all the time. Believe it or not, he'd come to the gym and shoot every ball. And uh, now he, he owned a Maverick, then on our team now. So I, I, I've been knowing Mark. Man, I had to be hold on, hold on. 80, 88, 87 or something that uh, he used to play basketball with us all the time at the mm-hmm. gym. And he's a great owner. I mean, you love uh, uh, what he do. I mean, he does everything he can for to make his players comfortable and try to spend money to uh, bring the city a championship. So you can't complain with a guy like that. He don't he don't cut corners on uh, stuff like that. Yeah. And obviously he has uh, an absolute – Star and I might be putting that lightly in Luka and Doncic and you know what yeah. uh, what do you what have you liked that you've seen from him and you know having uh, you know possible interactions yeah. you've had with him. So when Donnie Nelson them uh, drafting him and brought him in, I would uh, go down to training camp and uh, like man, this dude big because <laughs> and then uh, you know he already have an NBA body and then when I seen him play, I was, I was you know going back to the cigar bar like yeah hey. Y'all listen to me right now. Mm-hmm. We got us another star. <laughs> but he's a superstar. Uh, 
Luca make the game oh, so geez. easy. But he's been playing, you know, professional since he was like 14. Wow. But, yeah. But uh, you love watching him play because I like, I, I, Luca get mad sometimes. He turns his jersey off. He get pissed. I love that because that means he want to win. You don't want no guy just lose and then just walk off the court like that. I like it when he get mad and uh, and things like that and he want to win. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, we have a good team this year. I think we need a good backup point guard that uh, can come in and release some of the ball pressure from him, though. Dinwiddie maybe ho- hopefully can help him do that, too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Dinwiddie, uh, a, a great player as well. Um, but you're right. I think it's one of those things, you know, Luca can do everything, yeah. but sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You got to get him off the ball sometimes so get everybody else involved so that when they do, when he do want to take over, it, he can. And he won't be tired at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's 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 the endurance game for sure. Because, yeah. yeah. um, you know, you see a lot about and not saying that you necessarily agree with this, but, you know, you see a lot of the load management talk yeah, and, and things like that Ryan nowadays. G, yeah. um, looking here in the... is 28. 28 we're on. And Antoine G. This 28, one is 28 and Antoine G. 28 of 36. We are in the last stack here. Hopefully you guys are joining us. If you're just joining us, obviously... 86, 87, Fleer Basketball. You can see here it's Pete and I, but we have a very special guest in the middle, Mr. Spud Webb, Mr. here Spud with us, Webb taking your questions, taking our questions, watching Pete break this, and uh, you know, looking looking at some memories, pulling some Jordan rookies, pulling some Spud Webb rookies, and of course the gum, because we can't forget about the gum. I, Isaiah with the gum this time. Oh, you got the gum? Man, right Isaiah. over top of them, too. They did them dirty. Uh, question in the chat here, though. Uh, who was the coach... Who you felt helped your career the most? Oh, my junior college coach, uh, Jerry Stone, which is a real good friend of mine. Now we play golf together when his back not hurting on me. But uh, <laughs> I was I was in high school. I only played one year of high school basketball. Like made all city, all state of averaging close to thirty points a game. We only lost one district game and and uh, didn't get a scholarship and. Uh, and uh, he came to me and go, you want to come to Midland Jacob Junior College? And I was like, I have nowhere else to go. So I ended up <laughs> going to Midland Junior College. And when I got there, you know, there you uh, at my high school, they like give you the ball. Nice. Everybody get out the way, you know, uh, just go and score many points, you know, get us the win. And when I got to college, you find out there are other guys can play too. Mm-hmm. And they have plays. So I had to learn uh, a lot of plays, the fundamentals of basketball. And, uh, and uh, things like that. So Jerry Stone uh, was real instrumental in me learning the fundamentals of the game. Wow. When I got to NC State, all the stuff that they were doing, you know, I, I can get to the front of the line and do it because I had learned from him. So when I got to Jim Valvano and at uh, NC State, uh, it was the game became easier. And like yeah. when I got to the NBA. There he is. We were playing so much competition in junior college because we won the National Junior College Championship in 82. And, uh, and then playing at NC State and the ACC, when he, when every ACC team in there had like at least two or three lottery picks yeah, yeah. on there. So uh, people are like, it's rough when you get to the NBA. I'm like, no, I played in, in junior college championship and played in the ACC for two years. I didn't seen it all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. You know, you talked about Jimmy V a little bit there. You know, we talked about Coach K earlier, but obviously uh, not to be outdone by Jimmy V in terms of iconic coaches mm. um, in collegiate history. So what was that like playing under him and just, you know, the yeah. impact that he's had on the game? Yeah, he was a rock star, man. Uh, mm. <laughs> we, we when my uh, junior year, when I came in our junior college, that's when they had just won the national, I mean, the championship. So, 30 mm-hmm. Jason so, you know, it was really rocking around there then, and everybody was pulling at Coach V. But he was fun to play for. He treated you like a man. You know, what Russell. coach you have pull you out the game for not shooting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was fun to play for, but he was, he was hilarious. So he played basketball. So one day, I like a bunch of, some of the guys had uh, tutoring or something, and we had like, I think we had like eight guys or nine guys. He ended up playing with us. <laughs> Did he really and jump he, in, huh? And he hit a shot, and we let we we had never <laughs> heard the end of that shot. <laughs> and he hit a shot, <laughs> but it was it was a laugh. But he was he was he was he was about cool as he get. To, yeah, to thirty one. Yeah. yeah. Now something that obviously I'm sure 
I know you get asked about it all the time, but mm. for the folks at home watching, you know, I feel like we have to. It's iconic. We got to talk about the '86 Slam Dunk Contest. Mm. Uh, you know, winning that is one thing, but having done something like that in your hometown crowd, you know, what mm. what was that like? You know, what was going through at that time? Yeah, that, that my, my rookie year, I was still trying to stay on the team, still trying to prove that you can play every night. So uh, I wasn't into yeah, dunking, you know. Like now, they these guys got low management. They get to sit out. They get to watch YouTube, and they get to find dunks. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back then, you were working so Michael hard at practices to 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 get better. You didn't sit around at the practice and do dunks, right? And plus, you know, and then the All Star break, you 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 know, it's your first year in the NBA. You you want to go back home and, and throw your chest out, or you know, go visit the family <laughs> that, that you're in the NBA. 31. And Stan Caston came to me, which he was the what, general manager of the, of the, of the Hawks go, and the K. Braves at the time. Yeah. And he's like, you want to be in a dunk contest? I'm like, man, I was planning on going home. <laughs> and uh, so, You wanted a break. Yeah, Third so engine. the dunk contest, final thing, the gun, dunk contest was Saturday. Uh, and Isaiah. But I had to fly all the way to L.A. to do the Johnny Carson show. If y'all probably don't know Johnny Carr, I do. Show, then. The king of the original king of late night. Yeah, it wasn't no, wasn't no nine shows on the night. If you been on Johnny Carson, you made it, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So I went and did Johnny Carson on a Friday night and had to catch a helicopter to the airport. I had a red eye back to Dallas to do the dunk contest. And you know, twenty two years old, you probably didn't care about that, but right. Uh, Thirty-two showing up, us. Uh, taking a nap, and then doing the dunk All contest. Right, so one more here. The dunks I didn't know the repertoire of dunks I have been doing right, since I was right, like no. 17 years old. So I knew what I could do. It just that I hope that Dominique ran out of dunks. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, but yeah, I it never lived that down in Dallas in front of your home crowd. Um, you know, you I live there now, so you know everywhere you go, everybody was there. It's like. Hundred thousand people then told me they were there. The arena, that whole eighteen thousand. So, but it, I mean, done some some right. But that jersey, people call about it all the time. Uh, the the uh, you know remember. jersey shorts, the socks, the the uh, the shoes, and everything. They call about it all the time. But I uh, I don't I don't keep it. My I keep most stuff at my mom's house. Yeah, yeah. I gotta imagine one of those calls was probably the hall. Uh, well, the Hall of Famer, yeah. Texas did okay. a lot. They I let them keep it for about four years, to tell the truth. Oh, really? <laughs> I came home one day. I was on my mom's house. We was over there Thanksgiving. Something. I said, where's the dunk contest? They said, the Hall of Fame still had it. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, maybe it's time to get that back. So I called the guy. He was like, yep, it's right here. But whenever you want to come get it, I'm like, <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, I'll swing by and pick it up uh, next week. Don't worry about it. Just, it was just keep it there. Um Right as we were speaking to, I don't know if you guys saw, no. but we did pull our third Jordan there. So we are up to three Jordans, two Spuds, and three Jordan stickers, I believe. Yeah, for those of you keeping score at home, I did my math right. But that's why I became a journalist, so I didn't have to do math. <laughs> that was the whole point. Uh, we got a good question here from Skillset, who sent it in the chat twice, so he must really want me to ask this. All right, if you could make a starting five with you at point guard, uh, who would you be your squad and why? And this is an all-timer question. Yeah, man, I, I, I get this at the cigar bar every Fort night, Hammer you know. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new to him. Somebody come in there every night. Oh, you're very fine. Um, I mean, definitely, you know, point guard is going to be uh, um, Magic, Jordan. I mean, I mean, LeBron is about to move Larry Bird out for me, but, mm. man, Larry is so damn good, man. It's yeah, just hard yeah. to move him out. And then, you know, powerful, you know, you got to go with Timmy. But Fundamental. Know, people be surprised. I know people talk about Kareem wow. this and all that, but, man, let me tell you, I would take either – Akeem or Larry. Patrick. I know Patrick didn't win no championship, but man, those two dudes was tough for me. Mm -hmm. to, when I, you know, see them play in their matchups, sure, but um, that yeah. that that fire there, man, is is tough to beat with with Magic, Jordan, um, Bird, uh, Tim Duncan, and uh, you can pick Akeem or, or Patrick for me. Yeah, and yeah, interchangeable there, but yeah, that's that's mm. some great names, greats of all time, right there. I think that would be very, very tough to beat. Um, so, but I tell you what, Steph Curry moving in that pretty close, huh? it's, it's tough to beat. So Steph, so Steph Curry and LeBron James yeah, creeping they, their they, way yeah, in, yeah, huh? Yeah, 
So we got some honorable mentions. So that's the starting yeah, five. Yeah. A couple honorable mentions there. A pretty decent bunch. Yeah, right? Not bad. Yeah, that's a, that's a good depth chart, if you will. Yeah, that's, that's a good roster. Uh, so participating in the dunk contest, but what was it like being on the other side as a judge and you know how do you think the art of dunking has evolved yeah i i, I see some some of the dunk on well i i stopped watching them for a while because I, I didn't like the props sure. i guess i was kind of old school where you just like a gunslinger you do a dunk and try to i do one i do the next one but i think they should get guys that can dunk though the judge of dunk contest mm-hmm. seriously because that's very hard to do and some of the stuff that they, those guys were doing in the last couple of years, like, gee, what, where is that on YouTube? I can't even find it on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Especially what's the name that played in uh, Orlando? Um, Aaron Gordon? Aaron Gordon. Yeah. Man, him him and, and what's the name? And they do some dunks and you just, that don't even look real sometimes. I think he got snubbed. Oh, no Aaron question. Jordan. You won, you got all 50 and then can't win? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Uh, okay, for those keeping track, this is pack 36 of 36. Thank you guys for joining us and being along for the ride here. Uh, we're going to be wrapping this up. It's a lot of fun, huh? Yeah. We're going to be wrapping this up. And uh, after this last pack magic here, we are going to be randoming off the empty box that we opened earlier in the program. So there you go, Pete. All right, so our last pack here. Well, no, yeah, no pressure. Zero pressure. That's fine. <laughs> Just, you know, pull a spot or... Oh, Pete. Come on, Let's Pete. <laughs> Pist- Pistol Pete over here. This is our That's version right. of Pistol Pete. Yeah, I don't quite have the handles that Pistol Pete has. One more question uh, I have for you, if you don't mind. Uh, I want to talk about your time in Italy. Mm-hmm. I know you ended up playing overseas in Italy for a yeah. year. What was the experience like there, and what was kind of that difference oh. from, you know, European basketball than... Uh, American yeah. basketball. Yeah, it, it's, it's funny. I end up over here. there because okay, that year uh, uh, I was almost spot. got signed uh, by Houston. There it is. Look at that. Oh, the last, last pack. The oh, there you go, Pete. One for the All road, right. bud. See? <laughs> Trust in Pete. <laughs> Trust, <laughs> Trust in, Pete. in Pete right One there. One last spot for the road. <laughs> That's how we wanted it. We started with the spot, and, <laughs> and we're going to end with the spot. Starting and ending with the spot. That's and it would hilarious. only be appropriate to do that. There we go. It was funny. I, I went over there to play, and I was in Verona, Italy, and yeah. this is like top of the league. And uh, man, like if you could speak the language, probably be still over there, man. <laughs> the place is just beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the the city I was in was just like you was in a movie when you're walking around. It was the food was unbelievable, and I didn't drink. You know, like but they like. If they offer you some red wine, don't turn it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to hurt the locals' feelings. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was funny though. I was going to one game, and uh, and uh, the soccer field was right next to it, and we couldn't get to the game because of soccer. Man, they had like a hundred thousand people at the game. I was like, they're like, "What? Well, you can play some basketball, but there's soccer over here. <laughs> Where is that?" But it's nutty. I loved it over there though, man. It's it's good. Uh, it was a good experience from for me to go over there and, and do that. Not many guys can say they I know the NBA but say they played overseas too after playing twelve yeah. years in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. See I, the food would be the thing that would catch me the most. Uh, man. So good thing you were still actively playing basketball while you're eating the yeah, food, you, right? You you walk up and play like this is somebody's house you go inside of <laughs> <It's> a restaurant. <laughs> Looking over a cliff and all this. It was, it was yeah, beautiful. Whatever, beautiful man. sights there. Yeah. Beautiful sights there. Uh, so just a reminder for you guys as well. The three of you that did pull a spud web in this break, you are getting $4,500 in credit to dacardworld.com. So remember that. Uh, one thing left to do. What do you got there? Just the last spud. That's the last spud. There you go. Yeah, let, there you go. Take it out. Take let's it spud see right. spud. Right. There you go. Gorgeous. There you go. Love it. All right. We got one thing left to do. No load management on this car. <laughs> 79 Weird. games out of me. Weird. <laughs> they got their money's worth out yeah, of you, didn't they? All 70,000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and rookie contract back then was yeah. 70,000. Yeah. 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 I had three roommates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, why don't we do the random for the empty box? Uh, let's do that now, and then we'll say our pleasantries and 
sign off here. Do you enjoy yourself, though? Did you have a good time? Oh, absolutely, man. It's good. It's always good to get out and talk down-to-earth stuff and basketball and good questions about the people calling in. So uh, thanks for having me, man. Uh, all these cars I've seen now, and be dreaming about these guys. They used to knock me down now <laughs> all the time. But uh, it's it's good to see uh, you know you guys, what y'all do here, seeing the warehouse, everything. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. You, It's like you see a person that just show up and play sports, but then when you – Go see him work out. It's different. You go to a place to put out the product, then you go in and see how it's really done. You, oh, okay. They, they have more fun than us. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. It's it, that's the thing. It's people are like, you do what for a living? I was like, I know, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with it. Uh, so there we go. It was six times if you guys were paying attention. So congratulations to Brad H. You are going home with the empty box of the 86-87 Fleer basketball. And would you believe me if I told you that actually the empty box alone can garner quite a bit of money? <laughs> really? I, I swear. I wouldn't, li- I wouldn't lie to you about that, I promise. I'll put my signature on that and mess it up. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us for the past hour here. I hope you guys had fun. Spike. Sp- Spike. Spud. I've been called words. Don't worry. You sure? <laughs> I waited till the last minute to mess up, so I guess that's not bad. But seriously, though, thank, thank you so you. much for yes, being sir. here. I really appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, there you go, guys. The iconic, the legend right here, Spud Webb. And thanks to you guys for watching and tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm sure Pete will be on later. So make sure. I will be. Pete will be on later. Make sure you tune in for that. And uh, we'll see you next time.